here's where we get to pull, combine the algebra and the concepts of uh, tangent lines together and actually precisely calculate the slope of a tangent line and then we're actually going to get the equation of the tangent line because that's not a lot harder. What we're going to do um, is to use the official version of this formula. So we've got the limit, well let's let's see, let's, uh, let's put the problem here. The slope of the tangent line to the graph of y equals, now this graph is x minus 2x squared that I have on the right there with sketchpad add x equals 1. That's our problem. And um, so it's going to be the slope of the tangent line through here. I haven't, I've got a secant line set up here. We'll get, we'll get it to get be really close to a tangent line in a minute. And the slope of the tangent line, the way to summarize, this is really not anything new. This is to summarize what we've been doing already. The, it's the limit as, ooh, let's see. I want to write it a different way. There's various ways to write it, but I think we've kind of approached it this way. What we do is we take 1 and we add delta x to it. Remember that's one quantity. Oops, did that wrong. Just delta x, okay. And we're going to put that into the function. Let's call this def of x. And then we're going to compare all this random stuff coming up. Sorry about that. We're going to compare that to the function value at 1. And then we're going to divide by delta x. So you want to think of the delta x as the like the adding 0.001 business. So here's delta x. So here's the point 1, x equals 1, and it turns out that y happens to be minus 1 here. That's going to be at this guy. And I'm going to add a little bit delta x. Here it's a fairly big number. We're going to make it small in a minute. And I'm going to compare the heights here and here. That's the rise. It's actually negative here. And divide it by the run. So remember, the right hand side, we can abbreviate the uh, the top as just delta y. But when we actually evaluate it, we're going to need to figure out what those y values actually are coming from the function. So it's really going to be like this. This is one of the most compact forms. The limit of the rise over run as the run gets small. And we call that change in y for rise, change in x, and it's limit, It's using this Greek letter delta. And so there's various names for what this is. We could call it just m or maybe m tan, the slope of the tangent line, says m is a good letter for slope. But we could also think of it as, um, we could use various other notations. And one very popular notation is to take the name of the function, put a prime on it, and then just say f prime of 1. So that's kind of a preview of a little notation we're going to have soon. I'll leave it as this, but pretty soon we're going to change to this kind of notation as well. There's other notations that we're going to explain later as well. Okay, so now let's actually crank this out. What we need to do is we need to plug in 1 plus delta x into this function. Now it's got two places to plug in, so we're going to have to we put the whole thing in parentheses to be clear. So that's where I plug in 1 plus delta x into the function itself. And here's the other place I plug it in. And I get the square. And then here, I just do the same thing. I just plug in 1. Well, and that's just 1 minus 2 is minus 1. OK. So now I've got this kind of expression. And I've got to figure out how to manipulate that. Well, first, maybe it's easy. Maybe it's a non it's, it has a non-zero bottom. Oh, wait, no, the bottom's going to 0. And the thing is, for derivatives, for tangent lines, that bottom's always going to go to 0. Let's, let's look at the graph to remind ourselves why. We want to take these two points. We want to take this point, 1 plus delta x, and get very, very close in here. And I wasn't able to make this a label, so they're not coming in automatically. Let's zoom in. OK, and I'm just going to have to change the, fix the labels as, as we go. Uh, that's annoying. I wish there were a better way to do this. I, I bet there is. Um, so yeah, maybe the keypad, the key curriculum press people are just laughing at me right now for doing it this way. Uh, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the delta x, delta y. So here it is zoomed in. Here's delta x again and delta y, even though the labels didn't move with me. And what you can see, oh, I almost, I almost moved there, is that this really does look like a good tangent line. It's just getting slightly away. It comes in and just meets it and is going in the same direction. And then just the cur curve curves slightly away from its tangent line. So, and if I zoomed in even closer, it's getting very, very close to exactly the right direction. 
So that's, this is just the algebra that's corresponding to that process. And finally, we'll get a really sure version of the right answer. Okay, so now I haven't did, done anything. I just copied. So this is minus a minus 1, so I can just summarize that as a plus 1. Now here, I'm just going to expand this out. So that's 1 plus 2 delta x plus delta x squared. Okay. And then let's see if there's some cancellations. There really should be. We know that the top is going to 0 as well. That's the delta y. It should be going to 0. So there should be some cancellations here. And indeed, 1 plus 1 minus 2, that all goes away. Okay. And so I'm just going to kill all the constant stuff. Already, that's a wonderful thing, because now the delta x's are going to cancel. And I just have to collect things a little bit together first. So delta x minus 4 delta x, that's going to be a minus 3 delta x. And I'm just going to, uh, whoop, I don't want to erase that stuff yet. I got, takes care of that guy. And then minus 2 times delta x squared, and I don't need the parentheses. OK, so now I want to be really careful about not doing like, things like partial cancellation, which isn't legal. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just factor out a delta x really carefully from the top, put parentheses back in. So that takes care of this delta x and one of these guys. And now the only thing I can really carefully cancel is a delta x. It's a common factor on the top and on the bottom. But indeed, I have that. And so I just get this stuff. Actually, let's ta-da. Just this stuff on the bottom. Now this is not even a quotient anymore. There is no denominator, so there can't really be a problem here. When delta x goes to 0, this stuff all goes away, and I get minus 3. So let's see. Does this look like a slope of a line of slope minus 3? Absolutely. It goes over one grid square and down exactly three grid squares. So we can see graphically that that looks like it makes a lot of sense. OK, so there's our m tangent, our slope of the tangent line. OK, now what if we wanted to get the equation of the tangent line? That's useful, for example, in the problem you're going to be doing. You want to actually check this on a calculator. You want to graph the tangent line. And it's not easy to do that in the same way I did with Sketchpad here. Let's look at the equation of the tangent line. And then you could graph that along with the function, zoom in, and see if they look very similar. OK, we're just going to use point slope. And remember how that works. It means it's y minus some fixed, no, no. It's a quotient, y minus some known point y1 over x minus x1, well, what is that? It's a rise over run calculation. If I know the slope the line's supposed to have, the rise over run should be the known slope. So if I know point x1, y1, and a slope m, this is going to give me the equation of, the, of the, the line. And guess what? I know all that information. The hard part was the, the slope. That's minus 3. The easy part was the coordinates of this point. If we uh, remember what those were, that was 1 comma minus 1. Okay. So here we've got a point was 1 comma minus 1, and the slope is equal to minus 3. And so we just write it down. We have y uh, minus a minus 1 over x minus 1 equals minus 3. Or y plus 1 equals, let's just multiply, minus 3 times the quantity x minus 1, which equals minus 3x plus 3. And then just you often want it in mx plus b form, especially if you're going to uh, calculate the, if you're going to put it into a y equals in the calculator. So what we could do on the calculator would be to plug this into y2, plug this into y1, zoom in to 1 comma minus 1, and that would be a check to see that you basically get this picture. You'd see that it really does look like a tangent line. So that's what we're going to do. We set up this kind of limit. We do some algebra, which is getting a little bit familiar. We've done a little bit of examples of this to get a number for the slope, and then just plug it into point slope. And we're going to have other variations on this later, but this is a good way to do it now.